So I'd like to start off by saying that yes, this is a very bizarre book, and that's kind of why I chose it, because most of the books I read are, you know, classic dystopian novels like Hunger Games, but I thought this would be really interesting and change it up a little bit. It's very imaginative, and I, ne I don't necessarily think it should be included in the curriculum, because it's very bizarre and it's something I don't think I'm, you're about to listen, because I'm about to explain it, but it's very bizarre, and it has, the only thing that I, would, I really took out of it was it's very, it has very good imagery. His name is China Yevel, and he uses very good imagery. I have a little section from the book, I'm just going to read about two sentences from it. And he does an intro about the life of being a rat, and I thought it was just kind of disturbing, but I thought it was really interesting. And it says, I can hear the muscles in your eyes contract when your pupils dilate. I can feed off your filth and live in your house and sleep under your bed, and you will never know unless I want you to. Disturbing. Yes. <laughs> so without further ado, let's start. You can even tell in his appearance, he's somewhat, you know, scary looking. <laughs> um, but he basically, King Rat was his first debut mod, uh, novel. And the storyline is, like I said, very weird. But like by doing this, this was his first novel and all of his other novels are like this too. He basically created his own new genre of weird fiction that combined science fiction and horror and just brought like fantasy to new lengths. So I'm about to explain the storyline to you. So basically, it's about Saul Garamond, and he comes home, and he lives in London, and he comes home one day, and he assumes his dad is asleep on the couch, because he just sees him laying there, and he's asleep. He's woken up by the police, who arrest him, and are accusing him of his father's murder. And he's like, what? My father's murder? murdered? I literally didn't know. He, I thought he was asleep. So he has no idea what's going on. The police are arresting him. They're telling him, like, we know it was you. We know you did it. It turns out he was framed. So one night in jail, someone helps him escape, and you find out that that person is later King Rat, who is full human rat. Yes, bizarre. They never really talk about the description of what he looks like. They just talk about, they don't say like, oh, he's human, but he has rat qualities. They just say he's King Rat. So that's all you know. And it is revealed to Saul that his uncle is actually full rat, so that makes Saul half rat, half human. <laughs> yeah, I know, I see the faces. <laughs> that makes Saul half rat, half human, and basically, the, he goes to, he follows King Rat to the sewers and like learns about his abilities and his powers as a rat and tries to fit in as a citizen rat. And when you later learn that King Rat is actually his father and he's actually Prince Rat. So the main antagonist is the Pied Piper. He, <laughs> yes, China Mievel based this novel off of you know, the Pied Piper family. Like, so basically, the Pied Piper, as you know, plays the flute and he's forcing the rats and the other animals of like the kingdom to drown themselves. That's where it gets really weird, and the only reason Saul is the only one that can save everyone else from the Pied Piper is because he's half rat, half human, so he's not completely susceptible to it. So, I thought, you know, since this story is so far-fetched and it talks about, you know, free will and like people are drowning themselves because of the Pied Piper, I thought, you know, why not go for something really far-fetched about, you know, our free will and our destiny, and that's why I'd like to talk about the illusion of free choice. So ever since we were little, we've you know, been told that we can control our own destiny. But in reality, how do we actually know that free will is something that we actually hold in our grasps? Because our religion, for example, like, like Catholicism, we know, we hear that God already has a plan for us. But if we have this free choice to make one decision or the other, how it's still leading to the same ultimate decision. It's like our plan is already mapped out for us, but we're still making, but how are we still making these free choices? So I have a little analogy picture. It's a cow, and you can either make, you know, a left turn or a right turn, but you're still ending up in the slaughterhouse. Huh. So still, it's ultimately the same destination, <coughs> but the cow is still making the choice. So it's almost as if our free will doesn't exist because we already have our plan made out for us. So I also found a quote that I thought was really interesting by Scott Adams, and it says, free will is an illusion. Humans are nothing but moist robots. Just like to let that sink in. <laughs> so, and then I have another picture. It's a picture of a hand with the dice. So your dice is, the dice is in your hand for you to roll it, but 
it's already landed on one side of the dice. So whatever you do, your future's already mapped out for you. So I would just like to end with saying that I think we relate to the rats in a way, yes, we're not like drastically, you know, someone is playing music and we're drowning ourselves. <laughs> but I definitely think that our destiny isn't decided upon by dr like drastic measures like that. And every choice the rats have made up to that moment, up to their death, their every choice, every idea, everything has led up to that moment because death is such a prominent theme in this novel. And with our deaths already part of our plan, ultimately, we relate to these rats in a way because every mistake, every choice, everything we've made has led up to our death that we don't know is happening. And if you're wondering why I've decided upon, you know, such a philosophical subject, I mean, why not? <laughs>